Hey kids, this is Director James, and on today's Director James Explains, we're looking at Ankylosaurus. Now today's episode was requested by Kat Denton, a friend and fan of what I do. So she said, could you do Ankylosaurus, one of my favorite dinosaurs? And I said, sure, I have plenty of them. Uh, the episode today also is um, dedicated to her mother, Sandy Riser, who passed away a few years ago. The idea is very simple. Kat told me that her, her mother took her every week to the museum to nurture her, her interest in science, and that's a great job. And the idea is very simple. I think parents, you know, usually dads, grandmas too, but a lot of the kids I see is their moms who are like, my kids are to science, uh, let me try to help out. And they bring them to the museum and they, you know, come all the time. So that's a really, really good thing to do because, you know, if, if a kid likes science, we got to support that. That being said, we'll start with the same rules, oldest to youngest or newest models. And the first set of models are these Mark style figures. These are the earlier ones. This is actually a gift. Uh, these were a gift from David Temple, the curator in Museum of Natural Science. Uh, so the Ankylosaur figures here, uh, again, they get the job done. And again, the earliest figures often don't show all the, the right features, but the head having a triangular shape, the club on the tail, the big plates of armor on the back. Uh, the name Ankylosaurus means fused lizard. And people always ask me why. And it's like, okay, you see Tyrannosaurus rex, Tyrant Lizard King, that's pretty big, you know, teeth attitude. Uh, Triceratops, three-horned face, you know, that's pretty obvious there. But they go, why this one? Like, well, look at the armor. It's like this fused armor on their back, basically. So this early model did a really good job. The next set we have, or two we have there together, are the play school models. And again, uh, you know, people say, why do you care so much about these toys? Because kids play with these toys and they learn science through these toys. And it's very difficult to unlearn wrong stuff. But the idea here is that this, again, very good overall because it has the triangular shaped head of armor, the back armor, the tail club. Uh, and again, it's just, it's, it gets the job done. Very low and wide. And colosaurs are very wide as a group. Uh, that's one thing to point out too is that the Ankylosaur, Ankylosaurus, this genus, is what it is, but the Ankylosaurids or Ankylosaurs are a family group too. So often many different species are associated with this genus. Now, I'll go over that more later on in a minute. Uh, then we have this model here, and again, this this, this one kind of deviates. I mean, it keeps the same large head shape. Uh, the body is kind of squat, and I know the arms of an Ankylosaur, they kind of go out, a little down, but they don't go out. So that's one thing, I'm not sure if this individual was supposed to be squatting or kind of like ready to fight. I don't know what the designer was thinking. But overall, uh, the armor plates in the back are where I have a concern compared to the older models because these look like kind of like reptile scale tiles. And what's going on with the Ankylosaurus back is uh, they have these things called osteoderms. So if you ever see a crocodile or alligator, those, those plates of armor on the back, those are osteoderms, basically. It's bone in the skin. And in fact, to give you a perspective here, in dinosaurs, there are, they're rearranging some of the family tree, but in general, there are five main groups. The thoropods, or beast foot, are the predatory dinosaurs, T-Rex, Velociraptor, and so on. The sauropod morphs are long necks, like Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus. The marginocephala, margin is an edge, cephala head, the edge heads. Those are the uh, triceratops and ceratops, they have the frills, edge of their heads. And the pachycephalosaurus, who have armor and bones, uh, spines, or really horns back of their heads. Next, we have the ornithopods, which are the bird foot. Those are the duck bills and iguanodonts. So their feet look like bird feet in the you know skeletons. And finally, the thyreophora, which means shield bears. So that includes ankylosaurs and stegosaurs. So when you see a stegosaurus uh, plate in the back, that's actually not like attached to the skeleton. It's in the skin. It's, it's, it's an osteoderm. It's a very derived, very specialized osteoderm. But what you see with ankylosaurs is more closer in appearance to a crocodile, which is bigger and usually more spiny. So here you're seeing essentially which is this kind of scales laying down. I mean, they're not entirely wrong because we're not really sure on certain parts, but it just it deviates from the old design that we see that was very similar. Uh, one thing to point out too that's really interesting is on the more cheaper designs, uh, these Ankylosaurus have, don't really have clubs, they have spines. And no, like that's, like one of the defining features of Ankylosaur, this type of Ankylosaur, it's a club on its tail. And to just put spines there, it's like, you, Missed it by that much kind of thing. So that's a really big issue. Also, this guy here in particular, that, you know, the early, these models from like the 60s and 70s and, and, and 80s and 90s, they have these giant mouths and sharp teeth. And it looks more like a turtle to me, like a turtle. But that would, again, turtles don't have teeth. <laughs> but it's, you know, there's no armor on the head, which is a really big deal. Uh, the armor on the side, you know, it's pretty universal for any color source. There is a row of armor on the side of the body and then big plates on the back. Uh, the arrangement of the plates, we'll see the newer models is more accurate, but this is just, you know, getting the job done. But overall, like, these models are like some, I wouldn't only own these, but I want to show them to you to be like, this is not the best. Uh, so in 1999, Walking with Dinosaurs came out, 
And I remember I was, it was really a big deal because when I was growing up, we would go to church on Sundays in the morning and then again at night. And I remember that Walk Through Dinosaurs was premiering at Sunday night. And I begged and I begged my mom, can I please skip church this one time to see the Walk Through Dinosaurs special? This is a big deal. It's a, it's a really big deal. And she was like, fine. And she excused me. And I was so excited. And I got to see in Colosaurus. And they came out with these figures. Well, actually, first, a figure from the Walk Through Dinosaurs series. And uh, they they forgo the armor on the side, uh, but they do keep the armor on the head. The, the actual skull cap isn't as armor as it should be in this example. Uh, but overall, you're seeing the good design of the animal and a huge club. Yes, uh, of course. What we I've seen in paleontology and toys, in particular, is that if there's one media experience of an animal that takes on its life of its own. So, like the Lophosaurus, the, the neck frill in Jurassic Park, that's not a real thing it did. But since that movie came out, other companies make the Lophosaurus figures with neck frills. <laughs> like they see that media thing, go that must be true, and go from there. Well, with that being said, I've seen uh, back in the Toys R Us. And Colosaurus models the same body plan as the Jurassic, I'm sorry, the, as the um, Walking Dinosaurs body plan. So that's what you're kind of seeing happening here. Uh, the plates here are just kind of like, like discs. It's kind of different. Uh, I mean, not, I'll just move on. So Jurassic Park, uh, I know that the first thing Colosaurus you see in the movie was part three and 2001. And they kind of just, when the, when the Kirby's and, and Billy are in a tree sleeping and Colosaurus are eating, you know, below the ground. There weren't really many toys, but there was a baby in Colossus figure that came with one of the humans from part, I think, Jurassic Park 2, uh, Lost World. So this is my one of my earliest in Colossus that were, you know, from that series. And overall, I mean, as a baby, it's pretty cool because, you know, babies have bigger eyes, smaller noses. Uh, the club is not as defined. Those are features you would see in a baby animal. They would just be smaller uh, and the features would be distorted because if you don't know one trick or one thing that... Uh, young life forms do is by having bigger eyes and smaller noses. Uh, one is a developmental thing, but also it tricks many parent units and adults of their species to take care of you. So that's why this is like really cool. Uh, another thing I want to point out is this little figure here that comes in those like packs of 20 or whatever dinosaurs. Uh, again, gets the job done. There's armor on the back. This place it here, you know. On the edge of the nose is a little horn, and that's not a thing we know about in Ancolosaurus. <laughs> But my, as a kid, I would think, oh, that just means like it's like an egg horn. So if you don't know, some um, birds will have a little spike or reptiles, a little spike, not birds, reptiles. And they'll use it to break their egg open, you know, and it goes away over time. That would be like a, like a whitewash if it were a baby kind of thing. But I don't, you know. So for me as a kid, and Ancolosaurus is like 30 feet long. It's actually the biggest member of the Ancolosaurus family. So I always wanted bigger figures. So this guy is one of the biggest that I have. And I don't normally like the foam figures because a lot of times it's the uh, skin material will get dry and crack and everything. But this one is, you know, the test of time. And overall, it has the two horns here in the head, but again, it should be more a flat plate. Uh, the arm on the back, again, is very generic. It should be plates on Ankylosaurus. And I'll remind you again, there's other Ankylosaurids, which I'll show you in a minute, but that's something we see in those groups, not in this species, or just genus. Club is still there, that's pretty good. So I'm not complaining about that. Uh, normally I go over the toes a lot. Well, it turns out for Ankylosauruses, we don't have complete toes. Or feet so that's a thing well yeah so that's that's pretty much a thing so um for stegosaurus it's three toes it's not negotiable we don't you know uh so in college i've seen some in museums with five and four toes and three toes but we don't know for sure so i'm like you know i think you know so i can't complain about that because no one knows yet for sure there's no official thing uh in 2000 the movie called disney's dinosaur came out and there's an animal called or character called earl who took on the form of a dog and the reason that's so cool to me is that, you know, Ankylosaurus were some of the, had some of the smallest brains of dinosaurs. Of course, the contenders were the sauropod long necks. I mean, your body to brain ratio, tiny brain, huge body. But next to that, we have the Ankylosaurus. And in general, and, and I've noticed in, in prehistoric life forms, when it comes to, to herbivores, uh, you know, the more defensive lifestyles, there's usually your, your flight, or fl flight or fight. And for many dinosaurs, like duck they would just run away, you know. Uh, but for the Ankylosaurus, they're like, we're not only going to not run, we're going to go very, very slow. So they just got this, this huge armor. Because you have to remember, too, the animal is growing bone. And bone is not easy to grow. It's not easy to maintain. So it is heavy and it needs a lot of stuff. So nutrients and things. So for the animal to say, just grow all this armor and slow down. And, you know, that's telling you a lot about his lifestyle. That being said, with Earl, uh, he had a, the, the characters of a dog. And... You know, even though, you know, it's all made up, it's a movie, 
But it was just kind of interesting to think that, you know, like something like a ferrotopsian or a, a iguanodont having a slightly bigger brain would be more commutative. And then ankylosaurs, like a dog, are kind of simpler because they just have very simple lifestyles. Something that we as humans don't get that, you know, you're eating, sleeping, and pooping. And that's pretty much your, you know, and that's fine because they did really well, the group. Uh, the first ankylosaurs ancestors were in the Jurassic period. They, we see them going from there. Um, at this point, we get more towards the more scientific models. Uh, so here I have, I believe it's a Carnegie figure. So here's one of my, my first actual like, accurate science in Colossus. And the thing I'll point out is that the head here, uh, it's great. It's amazing. The head of this guy has this big, you know, triangle-shaped like helmet almost. And that's really cool because it's how it looked. And the plates on the back are actually plates. Now there are arrangements of plates and, and spines and things. They're all osteoderms and they're in the skin, not in the skeleton. But this arrangement seems more like what I've seen in museums. And my advice to any uh, paleo artist or anything is that to go to a museum and see the actual skeleton. That way you're not looking at a picture of one and interpreting that. You can see the skeleton directly and go, okay, here's what this, how the spine looks, you know. Uh, the club is there. Is very, and what's really cool with the club is that, you know, stegosaurs are fencers. They have these like 45 vertebrae the tail. They're articulate, a little muscle attachment. They're aiming with the spine. So if their spine hits a rock or something, it breaks, they can get an infection and die. Uh, the ankylosaurs, this whole area here is just stiff like a tendon. As much as serious, sorry, series of tendons. It's like a giant mace. You just swing it around, um, and you can break stuff with that. So that, that was there's not even a sense of aiming. Like stegosaurus had to kind of aim for the animal, and we see stegosaurus hitting uh, allosaurus in the hips with their spine. We have holes in the hips of the spine, allosaurus. But an ankylosaurus is just like, hey, just, just swing your swing your club. You're you're good. Uh, not a need to have as much aiming with a mace. Uh, that makes it anyway. So in Colosaurus, this is a really good model. Uh, notice again, they're very low and wide. We know they eat plants. Uh, they're herbivores. Uh, again, they're probably eating very poor quality plants to be that wide because they're spending more time fermenting. Uh, compared to a Triceratops or a, uh, a duckbill, Hadrosaur dinosaur, they're going to be chewing the food first and then processing it later on. Uh, these guys are going to be chewing very, they have very little, small, weak teeth. They're chewing it to kind of strip it down and they're dealing with it with the food in the gut. So that's why you do some low and wide guts, you know. Uh, if you go to Hobby Lobby, there's a thing called, a company called Mojo, that's kind of new on the scene, at least to me. And Mojo has this skin color here. And again, it, it hits all the major points. You have the club tail, the spines on the side, you have the armor on the back that's pretty uh, uniform, but you know, the, the, the horns here on the head. Uh, it should again, this tra this triangular shape is the best. This is close to it, not quite there, but close to it. Uh, so that's pretty good for the most part. Then, uh, and again, this is my, my, my pet peeve, but, you know, yelling, complaining list. I mean, these were accurate for the time. If you get into the 2000s, you're saying, wait a minute, we have better technology now or better specimen. So in Jurassic World, the first one, 20, 2015, uh, I was to point out with this model is that one, uh, they took the idea of dino damage where they remove the skin if it gets bitten, uh, and just had open wounds. <laughs> And Jurassic Park three and in Jurassic World, and that was always weird to me. Like, cause no, I mean, I mean, obviously there are damage, but every animal has open wounds. Just, that's just that's just Tuesday, you know. Anyway, um, this so Hasbro, I believe, did the Jurassic World series, and again, they have like you do the, the leg and the tail club moves. Uh, I will tell you that I'm not sure if the tail can move that much far up. It could kind of reach a motion, but like the it, these were all tendons right here, so like, it would be straight right there. This part was more flexible, but it was more of a lateral move. Maybe you can like a little bit of that, but not like, like you know, or maybe you know. But the right there, we know it's wrong because there's no there's tendons there. It's very stiff and bony. Uh, one thing to point out too that I've always complained about are the toes. I guess the toes aren't at, you know two, three, five, most likely three or four. Um, so I do think it's weird that the hand has like the two in the front and the one going like nine degree perpendicular and one going backwards. That's not a thing. Like, even though we haven't found it yet, I well. I can't say declaratively, <laughs> but most likely kind of thing, because most of the Ornithians, the vertebrate dinosaurs, uh, their feet, they may, they, you know, they have like the three main toes and like little nubbins, like a triceratops or a stegosaurus, but they have one go like that direction. If they do find that, that'll be really weird. But I'm basing, I'm guessing this is just a designer saying, how about that? Or for balance engineering. So it's not, you know, science or anything. Uh, the club, you know, is pretty good. The armor on the sides there in the back, pretty nice. The head armor, there is that big, like, massive bone there. It doesn't keep the shape of the Ankylosaur, but it gets the point across. In fact, most of the Ankylosaur's heads look more like Uplocephalus, their, their predecessor. Uh, and, you know, so like I said, always look for this head design. 
Frank House sort of like this big, you know, like this, like a little beak on the end. Uh, not the this is the Olupo stuff, different different genus. We'll see later on. Then I, at the museum gift shop in Houston, I found this guy here, and again, um, I like that you know the head's correct. They have the, yeah, it had that shape basically. The toes and fingers are more conservative because if Stegosaurus has three toes and they're also thyreophorans, they probably have three toes too, four maybe, but three you know so it goes, it goes forward with that idea. Uh, the hand has the three main and a little nub on the side. The fifth one that would be in the skin. That's what we're expecting in Ankylosaurus. So even though we haven't found those toes yet or fully, that's what we expect to find. And this toy shows that. So that's really good. Um, the armor on the side is really cool. The scale patterns are nice. Uh, but one thing to point out is that just these two these two spines here and kind of smaller and there's two here. That again is your Uplocephalus. Um, and your Uplocephalus, again, I'm going to go over in a minute. I'll do a video on him itself one day. But the idea is that that armor is, aligns more with that. So that's why that's my only concern here. But overall, pretty good figure. Uh, I went to a place called Shoes and Toys here in Houston, <laughs> and they sell, it's a shoe store for kids, and they sell toys, which I was like, where was that when I was a kid? Because buying shoes was always so miserable, but like, if there were toys there, and dinosaur toys there, it would have been way better. Anyway, so the point is, uh, this guy, to me, is one of the most perfect models I've ever seen. It has the, the wide body, that, you know, the low and wide body, that's, you know, makes me think of color sores. Uh, the skull has that triangular shape. I love that. The beak right there. The little horns right here. This, I believe it's Safari, or is it, no, who is this again? Oh, Safari. Yes, Safari. So, cause this is a Papo. Papo for the month museum. Your Safari. And again, it has these big plates there. And the club is very stiff right here. The tail is more flexible here, so they're moving it more realistically. Uh, the feet, again, three toes. It has five fingers. Again, I can't discount that. We can't say it wasn't a thing. Uh, it, but, you know, so... This is really great. I mean, I, I'm on a, I, bought, I was so excited to buy this figure in this shoe store for children. Anyway, so the idea is this is a really great, great model. Now, last I have a Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom in Colossaurus, which, I mean, after, well, at this point, it was almost like 15, 19 years, we finally got a big Colossaurus from Jurassic Park. Uh, it has the, you know, like that. I uh, also want to point out that the uh, club, like I said, the club, the comparison, this guy. There's usually like the big, there's one big bone here, one here, one there. This guy seems to have like five kind of sections, which is not correct. Uh, I mean, I guess go big or go home, right? But the overall armor on the sides, I like the way the toy actually has the armor coming out of the skin. So it's like, it's like there's a hard plastic and the spine is like sticking out of that. And it looks just like, well, you know, no. We would imagine the Oscar I'm looking like. You know, the, you know, crocodiles have their back, but then there's these, the, the the plates or the osteoderms pop out like that. That to me felt like really like real. Uh, the skull has a, per a nice shape, the triangle shape. And I want to point out one thing in the movie, uh, in the first Jurassic World, how it's, the Ankylosaurus is fighting it. And I remember I got super excited about that because um, we see in Ankylosaurus and in Stegosaurus on the humerus, the arm bone, there's a ridge right there with a delta that attaches. So you see big deltoids like that, and the animal can kind of like turn into some maneuver. The center of gravity is clearly like right here over the hips. So when the Ankylosaurus is fighting the Indominus, it is, you know, turning like this. It is kind of, I wouldn't say they were that agile, maybe, but they, it was spinning around. It was turning like that. And that's something that the the, the muscles, the, 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 the bridges in the arm would suggest, that there's a, move, a movement, basically, of getting down and, and turning. Uh, and Alison, I was like, that's, that's good. Uh, and what the Indominus did, which was... I guess, it, you know, what it flipped it over and, it, and there's no armor down here. So, like, turtles have big plates of armor. Um, that's why, you know, armadillos have armor too and they roll up to protect that area. These guys can't roll up, they're not that flexible. So, with the anomaly, it just flipped it over like that. You say, well, why? Well, in Colossus, live a T Rex and it couldn't use his hands to flip it over and it couldn't use his head really because it would put his head there and, and get spikes in the face. So, that's like a, that's just this, this, this defense system. So, the complaint I have with that fight scene, though, with the Indominus, is that it flips it over and then it bites it in the head. And I understand that it's a, in the movie world, reverse, it's a new predator, not knowing her limits, and not knowing how to kill, really, I guess, per se, um, or kill other dinosaurs, really. You know, you would want to bite the throat, usually, or the face, but it bit over the spine, so like, I can imagine it biting down and these spines into the, like, the palate. So that's something I was like, that nah, shouldn't be a thing. But anyway, uh, that was pretty cool, though. So... I also want to point out that my complaint with Jurassic World toys is that, like, in Jurassic Park, 
the baby dinosaurs came with little people and they look like babies. They had big eyes, and little horns and things. Well, they're, I think, baby dinosaurs are just small adults. And, like, there's no sense of a bigger eyes or smaller club or less, you know, dulled down spines. So I get that there's, like, a cut costing thing going on there. But that's, like, yeah. So that's what you're seeing happening here. Now, that's in Colossus in general. One thing I want to point out, too, is uh, the Ankylosaur family. It was in Thyria 4. So there are people see clubs and go Ankylosaurs. There's actually clubless Ankylosaurs called Notosaurs. So I have some of those guys that pull to the side. So well, first, let me do this. I kept mentioning Yooplocephalus. Uh, here's, here's an example of Yooplocephalus. Again, this is actually one of my best models of it. Low to the ground, very wide. The armor is... is Bigger spikes here, there, the tail. Uh, it's often believed that this is, this is like maybe, if not the direct ancestor or a close relative of Ankylosaurus. The name Yooplocephalus actually means well armored head because of the armor plates here. And again, that kind of boss shape. See, Ankylosaurus has more of a triangle shape. This has more of a, a bossing there, you know, uh, convex shape. So, this is a club Ankylosaurus. In Asia, we have Sanchia, and there's actually a lot of Ankylosaurids in Asia with clubs and things. But uh, these two, if you didn't know any better, they look, they look very similar. And, and, and to call them an Ankylosaurid isn't wrong. That's the same family. But they're not Ankylosaurus. They're a different genus. Just like you have a dog and a coyote and a fox. They're, oh, well, actually, coyotes are a canvas. But if you have a dog a and a fox, so they're different genes of species. But they're the same kind of thing. They're doggish things, they're different species, right? So that's the Ankylosaurids. The Notosaurids are these guys. So one of the most famous Notosaurids is Edmontonia, this guy here. It's actually a contemporary with Ankylosaurus. Uh, we have one that's in, these are all late Cretaceous. The early Cretaceous, we have Sauropelta, a very cool guy here. I got from the museum gift shop, actually. Uh, Sauropelta, and then we have Gastonia, which I bought online, uh, found in Utah. And then we have this guy uh, about, at this point, two or three years ago, there was all over the internet, there was uh, dinosaur money, essentially. Like, like with Ankylosaurus, the front half was like, it's like, like it was walking in a sand dune covered up in all of it. Uh, the name, it's, it's a brand new for me. It's Bor Boreal, Boreal Patelta. And so that's the one you saw. So this figure came out, I think, a year ago. And if you look at the picture, I think a museum in Canada bought it. But like from here up, it's like the animal's like that. It's in, the big deal with that is the armor alignment of Ankylosaurus is sometimes in question because... Uh, one, if they were, say they were, they're more rare. Like you find more duckbills. Oh, well, sorry. In Lake Cretaceous, you find more duckbills and horned dinosaurs and antelosaurs. They're more rare by comparison. And then two, when they die, their armor disassociates. Because again, it's not in the skeleton, it's in the skin. So the skin disintegrates, it gets, the placement's lost. So, and um, I know I've read some examples in papers of antelosaurs that died, they thunk that much into a river stream. So again, if you fall in a river and you have armor up here, you're going to turn over. <laughs> like this, and look go down a river, so the armor is often displaced. So for that one to actually have the armor just a line, that's a really a big deal. But again, these guys collectively have no clubs. They're notosaurs. Uh, there's another example of a clubless ankylosaur that I want to give you right now. There's more than one, but here's the main thing. is uh, These are North American uh, species. Uh, there's a group in Europe called Polycanthids. And Polycanthids was seen in Walking the Dinosaurs, actually, the one with the raptors. So Polycanthus is another of those group, and depending on which source you're saying that they're in the same group or they're a separate group, the main thing is you're seeing the three. So there's the club in Colossus and the Notosaurus. Um, so that's his lineage. And of course, their closer relative would be uh, the, uh, you know, like Stegosauruses or onto the side. Now, that being said, we understand this as, as genealogy. Let's look at the ecology. So where does Colossus, where can you find one, right? Well, it turns out, we hear about the fossil record, right? And there's the Mesozoic, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. Within the Cretaceous period, there's the uh, early and late. So you often see people who say early Cretaceous, late Cretaceous. They also use the word lower and upper because, again, the strata of rock, the late Cretaceous is upper, usually, and the lower is going to be, uh, you know, early, like this. So within late Cretaceous, there's about, you know, 70 million of years, and then you get to the very last part in North America, of Lake Cretaceous, uh, there's an area called the, the Hell Creek Formation, uh, globally known as Maastrichtian, uh, uh, and the idea is that that's the very last, like, two million years of dinosaurs in North America we could find, and Ankylosaurus is in that group. And the idea is that we're just, we're seeing is that the Ankylosaurus family, this lineage right here, in general, we're getting bigger and bigger. 
So Ankylosaurus itself is, is like the biggest of the group, basically. It's a little under 30 feet long. Um, and But again, look at his neighbors, right? So we have, let's use my example here. So in this ecology, you have Ankylosaurus itself. You also have uh, Edmontonia that's also there. And again, I'm only showing you a few of the animals in the ecology. Not all of them make to get toys made. So, you know, and also these two aren't the scale. Uh, this guy's pretty big too, actually. The more well-known relative uh, neighbors are Tyrannosaurus rex, of course, uh, Triceratops, and Edmontosaurus. And the big deal here is that these animals are also the largest members of their groupings. So we're seeing that it's not just Ankylosaurus getting really big, it's this ecology in the Lake Cretaceous Maastrichtian or Hell Creek where we're seeing the biggest animals. And, there, and, and I might do a video just on that by itself. Uh, but also I want to point out two more examples. Uh, the lesser known Taurosaurus, uh, and again, there's not very many models of Taurosaurus, so I'm very happy to have the few I do have. Uh, there's also a unusual dinosaur called Leptoceratops, this tiny little ceratopsian that if I, when I first saw the species in a book or somewhere, I assumed it was from Asia because most ceratopsians without horns are from Asia. And this guy was from Samaritan, which is really weird. So I think he may have crossed the Bering, or it or its ancestors may have crossed the Bering Strait. So that's kind of a neat guy in the environment. And it's actually smaller too. And of course, the Azu, which is a kind of oviraptor. Uh, also, we would have had in this time uh, Dromaeosaurus and Dakotaraptor, but I don't ha can't find toys of them yet. So that's the ecology they live with. You won't see Ankylosaurus, this guy's footprints, with Brachiosaurus or Stegosaurus. They're different ecologies and different time periods, that time and space. So for the most part, that is Ankylosaurus. There's always more information. I could talk forever, but I don't want to, you know. So the idea here is that I'll probably do a video on individual species and different groups. But with that being said, that's Ankylosaurus. Uh, thank you. And again, thank you to uh, Kat for requesting this video. And thank, and thank you for Miss Ryther for taking her to museums. Again, it's very important to go to museums and see things and go out in nature and see and appreciate things because, um, you know, it's just that's where the science is happening kind of thing. So thank you very much. I'll see you guys later.